Yo, this is Grant. Welcome to Smooth. Today, I'm gonna to take you through some of my training. One of the things I like to do to spur some creativity in my training is limit myself. And so today, I'm gonna to limit myself to one piece of equipment, the Shenna board. This is a push-up board that is common in Persian yoga. And uh, I found it to be really beneficial to feel grounded and connected through the push-ups. It exposes a lot of my weaknesses and allows me to work through them. Now, if you don't have a Shenna board, that's all good. I'll show you how to do it with a two by four. And you can also do this stuff simply on the ground. This just allows you to have a little bit more leverage in the positions. This particular Shenna board was crafted by my buddy Eric and he does amazing woodwork. So if you wanna pick up your own, I'm gonna hit you with his store link in the description below and feel free to check out his other woodwork. It's really cool. Let's get to it. Big focus on the upper body in this workout. Just gonna go through a few exercises to help me warm up. Swing my arms down, flex through the spine, and then extend through the spine, really open it up through the shoulders. <sighs> Getting that breath moving. Lateral arm reach, so I'm bringing my hand to the hip, and then the other hand comes over the top. This little arm reach sequence is uh, inspired by my buddy CJ and the Gymnazo crew, really cool gym down in uh, San Luis Obispo, California. I encourage you to check out their stuff. Painting with your hands, getting the hips. Oh man, I just love this one. I'm gonna pivot on my left foot, driving through my right foot. So I'm gonna follow that little U shape that I create with my hands, with my eyes, and then firmly driving through that foot. So now I'm feeling some nice rotation through my hip, loading through the ground. Alternating arm swings. Whew. So, sort of reaching through the arms. Staying connected in the center of the body, grounding through those feet. Switching stances, same deal. Another good one for that rotation through the shoulders and the rib cage. I'm gonna extend my arms out into a T. I'm gonna turn one palm up, turn the other palm up taking it into this arm screw. So rotating from the shoulder and switching sides. I like to have that intention of reaching through my fingertips, but I don't wanna overextend there. I wanna feel connected to the center of my body. So it's a reach through the fingertips, but also a pull back into the heart, a pull back into the torso. Little scapular circles. Starting to feel that broadness through my upper back. Noticing I'm rushing through it a little bit. I wanna to get to that workout. We'll get there. Same thing, reaching through the fingertips, pulling back into the center of my body. I'm gonna make fists, and then just taking it into some small circles. I'm gonna go thumbs up here. Same thing, reaching through the fingertips, and then rolling back. shoulder openers. So I'm going to bring my fist to my temples. On the exhale, close my elbows together, spreading the shoulder blades apart. On the inhale, opening. Sometimes this one takes me about 10-15 reps to really start to feel that broadening through the collarbone, that stretch through the front of my chest, but I get there through my breath. All right, pretty quick warm-up, but I feel like I'm ready to go, so let's get to work. So three rounds in this workout. Also wanna just bring out the two by four to show you that you could use this. Also, you could do this simply on the ground. Again, maybe a little tricky with some of the movements, but totally doable. Each round progresses, some different movements in each one. We're gonna start off with 
ball balance. So I'm gonna hop on the Shenna board. I know this is supposed to be a push-up workout and we'll get there. I'm balancing on the balls of my feet. And this is really a great way to get centered and connected with the rest of my body. And you saw me earlier really looking down at the board, looking down at my feet. Once I start to feel a little bit more grounded, that's when I bring those eyes up and I start to sense my surroundings. And while this is a lot of pressure through the ball of my foot, maybe some calf, definitely some calf, I want to start to feel that stability, that sense of groundedness up through the body. So maybe it's getting in my hips, pressing through the balls of my feet, maybe able to get into my upper body a bit. So coming down to the knees, and I wanna get into the cat rock. And so a lot of these movements you're gonna see in those primal movement workouts in the primal 45 program. So I'm just gonna hit a few of the standards there. So I'm rocking back, loading into the hips, and then launching forward, driving through my hands, feeling some nice support through the body. As I start to get a little bit more heat going, I wanna feel that pressure into the board, that groundedness through the board, where I'm starting to feel a little bit more confidence in those shoulders as I come into this more extended position. You can hear that nice tempo with the breath. Let's get a few more reps. <sighs> Oh man, all right. So whether you're doing that on the ground or on the Shenna board, chances are you're gonna feel a lot of that in the quads. One thing that you could do with that, something I like to focus on, is just a little bit of the tilt of the tail up, right? So now I'm a little bit more loaded into my cheeks as opposed to my quads, but it's gonna be a quad burner, no doubt. Next up, I'm gonna take it into some standard push-ups. So, hands are outside those base points. You could totally go closer grip. Slowing things down, getting a little hold, feeling that back, really fill in with my breath. All right. Whew. Nice. Got a little pump going. Last exercise in round one is going to be the sit through. So I'm going to go close grip on this because if I went outside, I'd lose it, right? So I'm gonna come up into that cat position, driving through my contact points, feeling that feedback up through the shoulders and the back. And then opposite arm, opposite leg, sitting through. I'm gonna sit that cheek all the way down. And this is nice because I get a little bit more lift through the shoulder and it'll expose me if I just kind of go lazy with it. So I keep driving through that point so now I can lift up and return back to center. And if that sinking down is a lot, that's fine. You can just kind of hover and work on stability. But I kind of like to open up that shoulder and the support through the side body, kissing that cheek to the ground. around keep it moving 
It's one of my favorite things to do in a workout. Not anything in particular, just how can I keep things moving? If I was playing some music right now, I'd probably be dancing a bit, but we don't want any copyright strikes. So I'm doing it in silence. So just walking around, moving, bouncing around. Whatever. Now I like to stay on task with my workouts, but one thing I do notice when it comes to strength workouts, and I am considering this a strength workout, is that it's very demanding on the system and rest time is really important. So really making sure that you come back to a baseline that you feel comfortable and strong in as opposed to just rushing into the next exercise. So first move of round two, I'm gonna take that balance on the balls of the feet and take it into a hinge. So once I find that balance, I'm gonna drive through the balls of the feet. I'm gonna pull those hips back. I'm sinking into a little chair here. So I wanna feel the glutes tensioned, but I'm not trying to squeeze them, right? I'm actually trying to send them behind me and stretch. We look at this big backside as a rubber band any muscle rather, but this one's uh, really important. So if I'm able to load this, that really helps my ability to unload it and then go into contraction. So this is the lengthening. And I'm gonna shut up so I can focus on getting some nice engagement through the body. Took me a bit, but I found it. Okay. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is I am prioritizing balance and strength, which isn't always the best recipe for specific strength work. So what I mean by that is if I want to be really strong and get the most stimulus out of some single leg work, it might help me in being on solid ground and having support with a wall. And that allows me to really load and then drive up through. So if you're like balance is better in some cases, sure, if that's your intention, but that's not always the intention. Sometimes it's really getting that solid stimulus of strength so I'm kind of combining a few things. Next one we're gonna do, we're gonna go cat, two, bear. Elevate my knees an inch off the ground. If you need to touch these to the ground too, in between reps, that's fine. But we're gonna drive through the hands and pull the hips back. And then come forward, touch the knees to the ground. And one thing I notice a lot of people do, especially because it's seen a ton in yoga, is trying to get that chest back here super far. I want to think driving through my contact points and pulling back through the hips to create a nice long spine. So when I do that, I might be able to drop that chest a bit, but I'm not just collapsing into that. I'm really honoring my strength. That overhead position for me, sometimes it's a little wobbly. So going through this, it exposes some weaknesses. And the other thing is I get to build my confidence through those reps, breathe into my body, feel some of the instabilities or some areas that are lacking confidence, fill those gaps in, feeling a little bit more confident in that bear. 
Now I'm gonna take it into the most common thing I see with the Shenna board, which is the Hindu push-up. So we're gonna press back into that bear, pull ourselves down, extend through, load through those hips once again. Driving through those hands, feeling the support and strength up through the body. exhaust myself too much on that one because I got a bunch more push-ups to do in this workout but that is a very common one and I would say that's a great place to start going from that cat to bear or plank to bear and then into that Hindu push-up those two are really gonna allow you to feel confident in that upper body strength throughout a pretty dynamic range so another thing you could do with this is if that feels like a lot on your spine mobility wise just make it a little bit more of a plank and now you're not going with as extreme angles through the spine and that might just allow you to groove this a little bit better with more confidence so know your own body trust what feels good and then you can start to expand and explore later on but you don't need to do a bunch of these crazy bendy exercises with the Shenna board just to get a good workout. You can simply stick to that basic move. So now I'm gonna go into the kick through. And again, I'm gonna place my hands on the inside of the stand there so I don't fall. I'm going to load those hips a bit, tilt the tail up, bring the knees off the ground, and then I'm gonna pivot on this left foot, kick through. Hold, want to make sure I'm solid through this side body, driving through that contact point, not collapsing. Coming through. And I love this movement on the ground, but there's something about the board that really exposes some of my tendency to collapse or not be as strong through the shoulder and the core. So even though we went through that dip last time, this time we're really holding. round two in the books I'm feeling pretty good uh, another thing I want to point out here probably hearing it a bunch but I'm breathing all the way throughout that right even though we're feeling tension and compression it's important to keep that breath moving that is a big focus in my practice whether it's with the Shenna board ground movement lifting one of these bad boys up whatever it is I got to keep that breath moving and I gotta find ways and build those reps of feeling strong and stable on both the inhale and the exhale. And if you've gone through any of my programs, especially the Prima 45 program, I talk about that a lot. Giving you that in the cues, stabilization on inhale and exhale. Just keeping it moving, walking around. And this next round, round three is a doozy. 
this guy's probably gonna crush me a little bit. So you get to witness that. So even though the Shenna board is like known as a push-up board, a lot of these movements are full body, but I do notice a lack of emphasis on this. So when I gave myself the task of getting creative with one piece of equipment, I wanted to incorporate those legs. So we did the ball balance, the ball hinge, and now we're going for the ball balance or the single leg balance rather. And so all I'm doing is finding my balance point, making those small adjustments, driving through this leg, establishing good grounding and rooting through the foot. One thing that happens a lot of the times is we wanna to look to what's working, right? want to see what's working rather than sensing, feeling what's working. So if I can bring my eyes up in any sort of balance drill, that will maybe cause a little instability initially, but over time you're going to be able to use the gaze, use your eyes as a way to balance. So I'm going to go ahead and switch feet. Maybe I don't have to fall off. Cool. All right, so same thing, driving through this foot. Give you a few more things. We're gonna have a little exploration period at the end when it comes to the Shenna board. Another thing I noticed with balance is it's dynamic, it's a process. So you might feel like you found it, but as you start to stand on Maybe it's just the ground, maybe it's something wobbly, maybe it's something stable, but a little elevated. You're gonna be able to start to feel the connection up through your body. So driving through that foot, all that has connections up through everything to the base of your skull, all the way up. So wanna feel the ability to leverage the rooting into the ascending. Circular push-up now. Can't say I'm really great at this one, but I'm gonna do my best to be a good example. So <clears throat> I'm gonna press back to that loaded position, and then I'm gonna pivot through my left leg, pull myself in, turn my head, and now you can see I'm loaded through the right shoulder now, and then press back. Pull myself in, turn, Press back. I'm all disheveled after that one. <laughs> Felt like I lost it there a bit. My left shoulder, armpit, shoulder blade area felt pretty compressed. And that's something that these movements will let me know. Hey, here's an opportunity to expand. Here's something that feels really kind of contracted and tight and small. Can we, through these movements, through the breath, expand that area. So I'm gonna do another set of those. I'm gonna face the camera here so you can see a different angle. And I just wanna see if I can get a better experience through the shoulders and just trust my body. So I'm gonna actually slow things down.
tough. And I'm using the feeling of the movement to guide myself. I'm not trying to think myself too much through it. And I really focus on being present, connecting through the movement and getting stronger that way, breathing. I'm really about doing the thing and continuously getting better at the thing. And then through that process, you can get better as a whole. Then some of this movement applies to some different skills that you want to learn. Like some of this stuff would be really beneficial for learning how to lizard crawl. Um, you could also just simply apply this to sport on more of a subconscious or unconscious level. So I'm putting myself in these different positions and feeling stronger, therefore safer and more capable because I've been there before. The last move of round three, I'm gonna combine the kick through with a push up for the negachiba push up, which is a common push up in capoeira. So because I'm gonna keep both my hands on the board, I don't need to go to the inside. So I'm gonna widen out, come into that cat position, knees are off the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and kick through, but I'm gonna keep my foot on the ground and I'm gonna keep both hands on the board. I'm gonna look ear to the ground, bring that leg through, kick it over to the other side, ear to the ground, kick that leg through. So this one, I just don't wanna sink into it. I really wanna feel my ability to pull the board to me Press that board away. I got one more each side. <laughs> Damn. That's good. So that one allowed me to feel out a little bit more leverage on top, but still being kind of in that bent arm position that I was struggling with in the circular push up. So, got a little bit more room to breathe into, and that's kind of part of the process as well. You start to sense the blood flow and your rib cage expanding with the breath. And now, any sort of adhesions, pain, stickiness, tension. You can start to see if you can let it go. Replace it with that good, warm blood flow and opening sensation. I'm gonna play around a little bit more. See what I can do on this thing. For the exploration, I'm gonna play around with some shrimp squats and some pistol squats. Now, I don't know how this is gonna be. My nervous system's pretty taxed, but we'll give it a go. And know that you can do this stuff on the ground, on a two by four, maybe some like a curb or something, um, if you don't have a shinna board. So all these movements you can adapt and make them work for you. I'm gonna find that balance, flexing into my ankle, flexing into my knee, flexing into my hips. Bring my hands out in front. See if I can get this knee to the ground. Boom. Standing tall. Beautiful, let's get a couple more of those. Jeez, that feels good right now. And so the task is something, I do it, great. 
and then I'm focused on getting better at it, which is going to require me to really tune into those different moving pieces. So what's happening through that ankle, knee, hip, making sure that spine's in pretty solid position. And then really making sure I'm able to drive through that foot, feel the engagement all the way up into the hip. So a little bit more limited on that left side, but I'm taking my time getting into that, really making sure that I get the most out of it. I'm not just trying to get that rep in. Can I feel that rep more quality? All right, back to that right leg. Let's see where we're at. So now for that pistol, a little less hip, a little bit more knee. So sinking down. And the pistol might actually be a little bit easier with a little bit more clearance because I don't have to flex this hip as much. But oh wow. I could be better on that. some work on the left side definitely expose some stuff feeling good though feeling good so I'm gonna do the scorpion push-up but I'm gonna do this from man, I'm shaking I wonder why uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do this from the bare position so I'm driving through that board and I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the right foot drive through the left foot open, I can bend this knee as well, open through the hip, and then I'm gonna look over my right shoulder, or look over to the right as I push down, press up, let's get one more, awesome. Coming back down, loading the hips, resetting, Coming out of that if you need to. Whew. Open that up through the hip. I want to drive through that plant leg as well. Really making sure the hips are strong. Looking over towards the camera. Last one. That's a side booty burner. A lot of times that movement is seen with a lot of bending, trying to touch the foot to the ground. And if I'm feeling like I don't have that space, that's not the movement to try to create the space in, right? Let's make sure we feel better with it and something else, and then start to apply some dynamic strength to the picture. We're gonna go ball squat 
and I might need to use a little bit more of that hinge. Oh my God. Your boy's a little taxed right now. <laughs> All right. This might be the exploration. Just see if I can balance again. I'm gonna start to bend through those ankles, the knees, and also send the hips back. And sinking into this toe squat. Now, I don't have to go all the way around, uh, all the way down. I wanna feel an openness to my knee. So those hips are loading, those ankles are deep, therefore the knees can be deep. And then, standing tall. I thought I was gonna be able to get a couple more reps to that. Last thing I'm gonna finish with, slide one hand as far as you can beyond the other hand. And then you're gonna continue to reach through the hand or the arm that's on the ground. So reaching through that, and I wanna envision my back as a map or a poster, or maybe you're putting a decal on something. So you don't want any sort of folds. So you're reaching through this arm and it allows that broad back to really open up. Another thing you can focus on with this is reaching from the rib cage. So I have my lat contacting the ground here. If I start to reach my arm through that, then I start to spread that tissue out a little bit more. And then same thing as I'm pulling back through here, I can pull through that shoulder or through that lat. And then, boom, a little bit wider. Well, thanks for tuning in for this Shenna board workout. Um, I hope you found some inspiration, some new moves. And uh, if you want more stuff on the Shenna board, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to put together a library of exercises. And then if you want a Shenna board, again, check the description below. My buddy Eric makes an amazing Shenna board and this will be something that you'll have for a very long time. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back with more. Stay smooth.